Hi, my name's Ian. I've been teaching art now for about 11 years. And prior to that, I was in the, the Merchant Navy. I've got a lot of friends in the Merchant Navy Association and during conversations with them, it's become apparent, apparent that a lot of them would like to be able to draw ships that they were on. The, the object of this little exercise is to encourage people to take up drawing and painting as a hobby and also maybe provide insights to people who are quite competent and uh, need to sort of progress a little bit more. I've got two little projects in mind. One is a, a sketching project, which is basically using a pencil. And uh, the other project is a more formalized drawing exercise, which enable you to, to, to do a, a proper watercolor painting. Perspective is basically the art of creating the illusion of a three-dimensional space on a two-dimensional surface. So one dimension is up and down, the other dimension is left and right. The third dimension is the illusion you're trying to create of something going into space. So to, to illustrate that in terms of a cube, you do the two-dimensional drawing which is basically a square. Then when you in include the third dimension, you have parallel lines, but they appear to come together. And that creates the illusion of the third dimension or perspective. So if I continue these horizontal lines, they should all come together at a point. So if I were to draw another shape there, say below it like that, the same thing happens. It comes together at the same vanishing point because it's on the same plane. It's parallel. This object is parallel to the one above it. So the same thing happens. If I continue that line, it will disappear to the same point. Same again. There. All these horizontal lines, if you extrapolate them, they all go to the same point. Single point perspective. Now in two-point perspective you're free to lower the eye level down a little bit Oops. this horizontal line corresponds with your eye line this is the same level as your eyes this is the illusion of creating three dimensions on a two-dimensional surface. For the first little exercise, uh, if you imagine yourself going down to say a local harbour or a docks or something and you see a little coaster and you fancy sketching it, this is not a formalised measured out drawing, this is just a sketch that you would do in situ. So the first thing you do when you look at this, you establish a datum, a datum to measure everything from. So in this particular one, I would choose the back end of the ship, the stern, and look closely at the shape of it. This, this stage is all about proportion. So I'm just going to um, roughly sketch it very lightly. Just check that you got the height of that right. Compare it with accommodation, it's probably roughly about the height of the wheelhouse there. Top of the funnel, it's, it is round obviously, or oval, but we're side on so it appears as a straight line to us. To say this is all rough, quick sketching. You just check in proportions and everything. So now we've got everything, all the proportions just about right. Now we can start going into a bit more, bit more detail. It's worth it establishing where the light is coming from. The part I'm drawing now is in shade here. 
so we know the light is coming from left to right. It's worth practicing shading before you start for the soft pencil. You keep it at quite a low angle, so more, more of the lead is, is in contact with the paper, and just practice starting really hard and then easing off as you go down. So you can get all the tonal values right and easing off all the time until you come down to white paper. And amongst all that lot, all these tones here should cover just about everything that you can see on the, on the subject. So I'm just using, to say it, an 8B pencil, pressing quite hard. Now the, funnel, the funnel's a, a circular shape, so it's a cylinder basically. Um, if a cylinder is lit from the side, then from the front, the sides are dark, but then you go light towards the centre like that. And then dark again towards the other side like that. So it gives the impression of a curved surface. Top of the funnel is darker, so we go over that a bit harder. Try not to put too much detail in, in the background. You want it. You want the ship to be the focus of, of the drawing, so don't get bogged down with all sorts of details of grain silos and stuff like that. So now we uh, come to the waterline. So there will be some reflections coming back up here. Dark objects are, are lighter in reflections, and light objects are darker in reflections. So. Just bear that in mind. Right, it's just a case of um, tidying up now and tidying up uh, loose ends and so on. Checking the tonal values of things. So for instance, the funnel here, I'm gonna make a little bit darker than I've drawn it, so. And the lifeboat as well. Put a bit more detail into that. The, the underside of the lifeboat there, it's gonna be a little bit darker. There, and I, I think we're done there. Right, the next part of this uh, exercise is to do a, a more formal drawing in preparation for a watercolour painting. Uh, I'm going to be working from a, a photograph on the, on the iPad, and it's a, a ship called the Hardwick Grange. The first thing is watercolour paper. This particular paper is just regular watercolour paper. It's quite thick. If you're putting a lot of water on it, it doesn't tend to buckle. The other materials that I'll be using are the full pan watercolour blocks. This is the uh, tray where I'll be mixing the watercolours. This is a pipette for putting water into the tray. I'll be using three brushes and they are uh, one inch flat for doing large areas as in the sky and the sea. This is a number about a number five round for a bit more detailed work say for doing the hole and so on and this is a very fine one a number one I think it is it is a number one for doing the likes of more intricate details such as portholes and such like. I'll be using masking fluid. These, this is to, to put down to, um, to protect areas that you don't want watercolour to be put onto, especially when you're using washes. The first thing to do is to tear off some of this gum strip and stick it down onto the drawing board ensuring there's no air gaps underneath it because if you do happen to leave an air gap you might find it tends to pull off that could be a bit embarrassing when you're trying to do the watercolor bit 
Right, we've got the watercolour paper safely stuck down. We're going to do a precision drawing of the Hardwick grains. So that the first thing to do is again establish a datum to measure things from. So I'll just put a vertical line using the T square. This particular photograph of the Hardwick Grange, I've decided that the final picture that I'm doing will be twice the size of that. Everything I measure on the picture, I'm going to double up in size. So I'm going to measure from the datum line, which is a line corresponding with the prow of the ship. So that is, this establishes where the prow of the ship is. Don't use a, a pencil any harder than a 2B because Harder pencils tend to make a line within the watercolour paper and you might have a problem when you're trying to rub out the pencil line later on if you make a mistake. <clears throat> so the overall length I say is twice twice of what we've got there and that is 165 so that's 330 so measure that off 330. 300, 330 And that establishes the back, where the back end of the ship is going to be. So we start measuring off. Now we can check that these, all these horizontal surfaces are, are in the right line by using a, a piece of string. We know that this line is, corresponds to the eye line because it's horizontal. So if I put a drawing pin on the extension of the eye line and rotate the string round, all these horizontal lines should all be in line with this piece of string. So if I rotate the string round, I check that one's in the right place. That one's in the right place. These are the cross trees. The accommodation is in the right place, just. The king posts, that's the tops of these, they're in the right place. That one needs lowering a little bit. That one needs higher uh, raising. That's quite a useful thing, that, to check all your horizontal surfaces. Right, so this is masking fluid, which I'm going to use to uh, put round the outline of the ship to protect it from when I put the watercolour wash in the background. And you just paint it down like that. It's yellowish in colour so you can see exactly where you're putting it with a fine brush. So a wash is a, a broad area of watercolour applied with a large brush. So obviously you can see now that I've, I've turned it around. 180 degrees in preparation for a wash which will be the lower part of the sky so I'll be starting here working down towards me so I'm going to do a a rose matter type wash on the skyline maybe put a bit of yellow in it as well warm warm it up a little bit now you can test it that's an interesting color that Okay, so I'm using a one inch flat brush and what I'm looking for is a graded wash. So start with quite strong colour there and then pale it off. Make sure you've got enough colour to, to cover the whole area you want to cover. Take a deep breath and go right, be as accurate as you can, put it down and then work quickly. Uh, that should be it. We'll just let that dry for however long it takes now. So now we're ready to do our graded blue sky wash. Right off. Oh, I'll let that dry now. Okay the next part of this exercise is to do the sea. Again it's a, a large area wash. Make sure there's no holes between the paint and the masking fluid, anything like that. Right, now that the um, sky wash 
appears to be have dried. I can uh, rub off the uh, masking fluid, the yellow areas of masking fluid, and hopefully that will reveal some nice white bits of paper ready for painting. So just with a little finger, I'll rub it off. It should curl off. Right, I've mixed the black up in the, in the palette, so the next step is to paint the black parts of the ship. I do think this is quite a majestic ship. This It looks like a the shipping equivalent of a, a grand old lady, this very majestic. This tone of black doesn't really change right across the length of the ship, so it's a consistent tone. Right, I'm carrying on doing some uh, details to the accommodation. So in this particular picture, the light is shining from the right, so every, everything on the left is in shadow. So these cross trees are in shadow on the left hand side. Okay, so the next stage is to paint the, uh, the boot topping area, which is this, this area here. I've mixed up um, a burnt sienna and a, a brick red, which is this one. It changes in tone from the front to the back, so as we get towards the back end, I'll introduce a bit more dark brown into it. Right, next thing to do is uh, to put another layer of uh, sea in basically. So using the original blue I made for the sea, I'm just modifying it slightly so it's a, bit, a little bit darker. And um, just being aware of the trends of any waves. So in this particular picture, the waves are trending sort of at a slight angle left to right. <clears throat> right on. Finish up now with a, a final part of the sea, which is the reflections of the ship. So I'm going to use uh, a brown as opposed to a black. Black for the actual hull, but brown is the reflection in the sea, which tends to happen. Dark colours become lighter in reflection. So making sure I've got the trend of the waves right, which is a, slow, a slight angle left to right. So um, this is to say quite a dark brown. So I need to come out in, in quite sharp points there. Keep working it. Keep working that colour. Keep close to the masking fluid. So we have a nice contrast there. And even smaller ones closer to me like that. That should do it. So the last thing to do, when the brown reflections have dried, I'll rub off the, uh, the masking fluid. Mm -hmm. 